And we're live. Are we hey, live? we are. That's it. Once the team tells us we're live, we're live, Seamus. We got this Tim Hortons a- and we got McDonald's. We're, we're supporting both. That's right. We're supporting both. How you guys doing? It's brunch with REC. I don't know how you guys deal with a weekend off of us, but you obviously did last weekend and we're back. Jazz and Seamus in the same room together. And since, you know, look, when we did that cheers of the Tim Hortons and the McDonald's, now I'm actually curious. Which coffee is better? So I'm a, like a Tim Hortons guy every single day. Well, I'm going to say they're bullshit. What? <laughs> Compared to? <sighs> Any real coffee. They're good. Listen, well, for a morning drive in, for all intents and purposes, this mud water is just fine. But is you this call coffee? Him mud we're not water. call this coffee. And here, and here, I thought we were going to get sponsored by McDonald's or Tim Hortons someday. But we're that's, definitely not taking this. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Let us know, guys. As always, where you're <laughs> signing in from. But are you a Tim Hortons coffee drinker or a McDonald's coffee drinker? Blue, press the like button for <laughs> Tim Hortons, and I want you to press the red button for McDonald's. It's the heart oh. button. I want to know. Let's light up the comments. It really lets us know that uh, uh, you guys are engaged with the conversations. For anyone who's new to Brunch with REC, this is the place where real estate conversations happen. And are we good with audio? Just let us know, guys, if we're good with audio uh, because we brought the big boy Seamus back. And as he comes we're in, he's, great, he, bro. He, he's like a bull in a china shop. He comes in here, all the equipment's <laughs> changing, everything's moving around. So we just want to make sure that audio is good. We have a very, very packed uh, uh, show today for you. Seamus, why don't you talk about the two people that we're going to bring on, but we are going to get started with the real estate corner like we do every single Saturday, but talk about the two guests that we're going to have on uh, today. First bro. and foremost, good morning to the entire REC nation. I love you. I, I can't wait to see where everybody's signing in from. That's actually my favorite part because we're starting to see a lot of the U.S. We're starting and I'm, to see all and I'm watching Canada. the comments now. I know our boy Tyler, Ty Ty Walburn's in the comments. We, I, I'm not sure if Bobby and Laura are there, but either way, I I'm also going to be watching the comments. They're right on my phone here. Make sure you let us know. Red for uh, for for uh, McDonald's. Probably should have been the other way around, but we're going to go red for McDonald's, a red heart, and a blue like if you drink Tim Hortons. Go, Seamus. Um, t- t- today, fam, we're going to be speaking uh, to Marlene Kornakia, who is uh, one of the founding team members uh, since day one. As a matter of fact, she's been involved with the REC uh, about eight years before my existence on the REC. So she's a, she's a founding member, and she is uh, the sister of our founding partner, Simon. She was actually um, the only agent on the team when I came. Right, that's right. Yeah, when, I, when, when I met both of them, um, she was actually the only agent uh, uh, that was with REC. So I can't so t- believe it's been 16 years that's right. ago. It's 16, 15 uh, for me. Uh, and, and of course, uh, she is a listing broker, uh, a natural listing broker, meaning she never tried uh, to be anything but herself. Her relationships with her clients run deep. She provides a massive value proposition because of her depth and because of her character. Uh, and she is definitely one of the most recognizable names uh, in the Durham region, uh, in the Eastern GTA, meaning Scarborough East, uh, Marlene has sold millions and millions and millions of real estate, hundreds, maybe thousands of transactions at this and point not only in her Scar- career. Scarborough East, but like all of Durham, like, you know, even right into No, I'm saying Durham. from Scarborough, Scarborough right Toronto, over to Bowmanville, kind of Newcastle. I, I, I know she's had to stretch out because as we go through the numbers a little bit later, you got to drive till you qualify. And we're going to say that a couple of times today. So everyone get used to it. And to put it into perspective, like like the the Durham market has grown so big and, and, and has grown in value so much where they broke records uh, two months ago and they continue to break records. They're actually over 800,000 at this point for an average price point, which is unheard of. Durham used to be that that safe place where somebody can sell in Toronto and find something affordable uh, where it's still a beautiful, uh, a beautiful course of four cities sure. uh, side by side and you had lots of choice and sorry one second steven i don't need the headsets until we bring on marlene and our guests right so same right. thing with you buddy okay awesome now you get so, to so, see the like i didn't get a fresh fade or a fresh haircut <laughs> but you get to see seamless's beautiful bald head it's as like well the globe. <laughs> the globe was the globe. in the house. I love that. Come uh going back to mar i mean she's just an excellent agent um yeah. Any and I don't care where you're from in the country or on the world and you're watching us. If you ever want a couple tips, if you ever need some advice, 
Real estate is real estate everywhere. Doesn't matter what market you're in. The agent who's going to provide value to the client is the same everywhere. And we have no lack of, of connections to great agents all in all these markets. We have a tremendous network. But this is a GTA seasoned and hardened agent that knows how to negotiate on behalf of our sellers. And right now, this market commands and demands that you are represented by the best. Well, like a shark. At the end of the day, you I mean, need it. Yeah, you need it because, yes, you might think, okay, you put up, you, you're seeing a for sale sign put up uh, on someone's lawn and it's selling within days, if not hours at some point. But there's a lot that's happening in the background to control all the, not only the showings that are coming in, but all the offers. Yeah, you, you, you put up your home on the market and have uh, 10, 12, 14, 47 offers. I can tell you, if you don't have someone who's experienced, in in handling the offers making them play off of each other That's right. you could it could cost you thousands of dollars in today's market hundreds of thousands of dollars and and i don't say that lightly and we're going to talk and go really really deep into the market just before we do that Simos, i just wanted to welcome everyone just kind of reset yes. what we're doing today sure. it's it, it is brunch with rec the place that real estate conversations happen every other saturday at 10 30 a.m eastern i'm seeing more and more people come on but here's a main reason. Here's a main reason why we went to the Facebook platform because we've been getting questions like, guys, you used to do it on Zoom, and but now we go on Facebook. Why? Because it's actually easy for you to introduce your friends and family to us. What do just I mean by them. that? You just got to tag them or press the share button. Test it out for yourself. Make sure it works. That's my shameless plug. And, no, and of course, we <laughs> ask that you do that. A hundred percent. Please share the, the please share the webcast with... It's right uh, to the right of you. Yes. Right, right below the screen right now, there's a share button. If you click that and let people... People know that you're watching Brunch with REC. You guys know that out of the 26 times, because it's every other Saturday, the, out of the 26 times that we're going to do this in, 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 in 2021, there's going to be five to six opportunities and that we're going to get real loud about. Today's not one of those days, but at the end of the day, if there's someone that you know that should be watching right now, press that share button. Let's go into the real estate corner segment. Uh, one second, in, in a second to, yeah. to Marlene. Uh, and my, my last comment was there for a residential listing agent, the difference between using the, the right agent and the wrong agent mm -hmm. in a market this busy. It's not a question if you're going to sell. It's going to sell for how much you're going to sell and the terms that you're selling under. Totally. Agree. And it's the difference between the New York Symphony Orchestra mm. and the high school band. There, there, there is that oh, big of a difference. Watching Marlene work. That one, that's a new one. I haven't heard that one from you before. It so. actually just happened. No, 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 no. It wasn't pre-scheduled. I have a feeling after you picked up your Mickey D's coffee that it like it started you think to it come to you. It like, enlightened like, me. Yeah, it enlightened me. So this coffee is so good, like a New <laughs> Dude, York. I've been with you for fifteen years. You've never said that line. So that's a new it, one, and I like came. it. It just so came. Say it again. I want to hear it again. I want everyone else to hear. Okay, it but as now well. I'm getting nervous. Now I have to remember <laughs> what I said. You on the spot. All right. So the difference between watching Marlene work. Yeah. In an amateur hour work, yeah, in a market that everything sells, because you could sell yourself if you wanted to, hundred percent, you'll sell, yeah. But are you going to get undermined? I would put a ninety nine point nine percent likelihood that you would be undersold, and there's no reason for it. But anyways, the whole point of this exercise is a great listing broker knows what to do, knows how to stay calm and organize offers, and be able to line agents up to work against each other for the benefit of your client. So uh, I'll just leave that there. And second, we're going to be introducing Jacob Campanero. Yes. Also known as uh, Simeon's protege in commercial real estate. He's my VP of the commercial section. And you might He's, know the, 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 the last name as well, right? A lot of people, a lot of our REC insiders right. will be familiar with the amazing with, Carmen Campanero. With the, with the Campanero name, um, um, son of Ca Carmen Campanero, who is, uh, uh, I guess, founder and, and president and CEO of, of Valor Capital Valor Ca and ProFunds and, Mortgages. And Pro Funds Mortgages. Uh, Jacob uh, joined our team four years ago. Four years ago. Um, just a sharp, sharp sharp human being it's the um, work so ethic when it comes to when it comes to uh, uh multifamily investing commercial investing this guy really has his boots to the ground and so i'm excited that we're going to be speaking about listing properties and selling them for, with marlene and then and then we're going to go into jacob's conversation and just talk about hey what's going on man like it's where are you seeing opportunities for investors like just areas wise and you can always get in touch with us by shooting us a quick email at info 
at recanada.com. I'm reading the comments and I'm loving them, CMOS. I'm glad that you can't read them because I have a lot of fun sure, with these sure, comments. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Um, uh, but I see, uh, you know, I thought it was the beautiful uh, uh, Anna Raposo joining us, but then Art says, no, it's me on her account. So big <laughs> shout out to the Raposo family. Carlton, up, Dan, Carlton, Carlton and Mary, how are you guys doing? And Carlton says he drinks both Tim Hortons and McDonald's. For anybody who's joining us, it is... The question of the day, the poll for the day is, are you a Tim Hortons drinker or a McDonald's drinker? Tim Hortons is a blue like and McDonald's is a red heart. Let's jump into Stephen Clem, who's ever manning the ones and twos in the back. Can you do us a favor? Bring up the greater Toronto area market stats. We're only going to talk about the GTA as a whole. And, the, and this is insanity. This is insanity. And these are just black and white figures. This is, you know, we, we, we might dribble in a little bit of our own opinions but first and foremost i want you to be educated because education will always mitigate risk and this is not a forecast this is not nostradamus this is not see you know we know simos did leave his crystal ball at home because he's joining us like live here in the but room this <laughs> we, we have a crystal ball here somewhere <laughs> um, um but with that said we're gonna go over specifically the gta market stats why do i emphasize that because Richmond Hill is totally different than Brampton. Brampton's totally different than Mississauga. Mississauga's totally different than the harbor front. To get your regional stats specific to the area you're looking at, please send us an email at info at recanada.com. All you have to do is put in the subject line market stats. We'll send you the link. It will be a Google folder with all the regional stats. Bring that up for us, Stephen Rochester, please. And a big, big shout out to both Stephen and Clem, the beautiful Clem Alves, who's Manning the ones and twos and the cameras and 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 if you guys have watched any can, of can our I, videos, can I give a little factoid? You, yeah, not an altoid, a factoid. Factoid. Go, Stephen Rochester, mm. man of all men, a prince of men, really. Yeah. Will do anything for anyone, yeah, especially us, yeah, because he loves us so much. Obviously, what he's, he he's the today? best, yeah, best, yeah, head of any media division of uh, all time. D period. D d but let's talk a little bit about Clem. Clem. Who is of Portuguese background? Yes, he is. used to live in Portugal. Yes, real European cosmopolitan cat. Yeah, this sure. guy, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, so he was walking down the street one time. And he got a job. Where did he get a job? MTV Portugal. Yes, he did get a job. We MTV. got the dude yeah. of the dudes yeah. editing. He's. Well, now you're not, 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 now you're taking me da back down memory lane. I mean, this guy, not only did he apply for a job, but the, what I loved about Clem, he was the only one. I think we got like 87 resumes, applications, whatever you want to call it. And he was the only guy who sent an email directly and said, I'm just making sure that you got my resume. Boom. I want an interview. Get Boom. me in your room. He came in here. I asked him two, three questions. I said, you're hired. He goes, when do I start? I was like, go get your camera right now. You're starting now. Boom, 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 and boom, he's boom, never boom. stopped ever since. So we are very it's huge. Grateful. Shout out. We Love are you guys. huge grateful for the whole media squad and we always talk about our leadership team because we wouldn't be here Correct. if it wasn't for but mr bobby pume director of operations tyler ty ty walburn i love you oh my god i saw a picture of his daughter nora you're gonna want to bite her little thighs and calves just 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 that's probably why you protect her because i would a hundred percent just a cutie which is nora and 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 obviously our girl uh vp of rec canada miss mrs laura stewart steven bring up the stats for us buddy let's go dive into these stats because this is a look 16 years we've been doing this 16 years we've been doing this we've seen similar numbers Similar numbers to this back in end of 2016, early uh, uh, 2017, but never, I haven't seen numbers like this before. So similar, yes, but never actually. We, we've seen them from Toronto. We've seen them for that market or this market. Yeah. What you're seeing on your too. screen right now is the entire greater Toronto area. I want you to really think of what kind of population density and literal Square kilometers we're talking about. What are we talking? 75 kilometer radius, I always say. I think we're talking about 7 million people yeah. being affected by this number well, right here. So if, when you're reading it in the media that uh, um, 
the market is crazy and what's going on. I mean, here's the truth. I mean, th th this is why. And let's talk about the, the market indicators. We won't go too deep on this. Actually, we're pretty good on time, uh, but we'll, 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 we'll spend another five minutes maybe just going over the market indicators. Because again, if you just want your own PDF for your for your specific region, all you Request. gotta do is send that email. Ty, Ty, do me a favor, buddy. Put it in the, uh, the comments. So market indicators, let's talk about that. Simos, you can drop us into port in Portugal. You can drop us in Jamaica. You can drop us Doesn't in matter. India. You can drop us in Greece. We will know what to look for when it comes to the numbers. All, all you need Based is a few. What? It's a few key indicators oh. that you can catch your bearings on in seconds. Uh, you're you're looking, uh, of course, at the at, at the average price. Yep. To understand the price point. Mm -hmm. If you want to understand the absorption, you look at the days on market and you look at the supply of inventory being the absolute biggest indicator that's the absorption that is the uh absolute truth yep. into how long it takes from at the time uh, any dwelling or property come on the market to the time it's sold so it's it's literally the amount of listings yep. that are on the market versus the supply that's scooping them up right now in a 75 kilometer radius that affects 7 million people or a quarter of our entire country's population, there is 0.8 months of inventory. Which means essentially a slightly over three weeks of, in, of inventory. To me, that's the biggest market indicator. <laughs> average price and all that because, look, I mean, average No, I'm saying to get your bearings. Market indicator, it's the only one. 100%, right? Like... Because if nobody put their home on the market or their condo on the market, as of today, it would take three weeks for all the properties to be sold. Hence why you're seeing values continue. This is the trajectory, and this is why we've been say seeing it. Really no, the trajectory since... is scary right now. Well, let's talk about that as well, because I think what people hear in the media is, is it, we're in a real estate bubble. What's happening? Why are values creeping up? So I want to answer that question first. I want to really talk about why values are creeping up. Because sure. values are creeping up because basic. Basic, basic supply and demand. There's way more demand than there is actual supply. It's just, you know, I always tell the story, right, about the baker, the bread, right? You go to a bakery and there's only so much bread and there's a lot of people lined up. Guess what that baker is going to do? He's going to increase the price of the bread. That's what's happening with values in real estate. Now, asking price is irrelevant and we're going to go real deep with Marlene with this. Yes. It's set on purpose by realtors and sellers lower than what the market value is to entice buyers to come in. Well, and to, for, to allow the market to speak as well. 100%. So, so put it up for a dollar. Yeah. And it's people who are going to determine what that property or that, that land is worth to them. It's not up to a realtor to do. Mm -hmm. A realtor is there to guide. Yeah. A realtor is there to serve. But it's the market who speaks. It's the market. It's the buyers. The market who makes the decision and sets the bar day after day. Now, if you're a seller in the GTA and you're wondering how long is my home going to stay on the market for? How long is this going to take? On average in the GTA right now, it's going to take 18 days. Steven, if you don't do me, uh, uh, if you don't mind, do me a favor, bring that, that, that image up again. Cause I really want to make sure people see this, that they on average right now, I appreciate that Rochester. Um, and big shout out to Carolina, AKA Roro, just joining the new team the here days. as well. Oh, so, so, sorry. It's okay. Go. Oh. Cheers, Carolina. Yeah. Uh, but 18 days, yeah. month over month, that's a 15% decrease in time. Right. So the speed at which the buyer and the process is happening yep. is coming down by 15% month over month. Now, I told you that average price is not a, uh, a main market indicator, but we should definitely speak about it because now average price in the greater Toronto area, that's taking all home types, condos, semi-detached townhomes, all of it, we're slightly over a million dollars compared, comparing that to last year, end of February, 2020, it's up by 15%. When you said scary. I can I, explain why. Go. So, and everybody knows that I'm a little bit of a freak and uh, obsessed with uh, economy stats, etc. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to go into a crazy uh, wormhole with this. Yeah. 
But I, what I will say is, yes, it's amazing if you're a homeowner to see prices jump this way because we're all creating wealth in real estate. And the fundamental presence of the REC team, our, our actual mission and vision yeah. uh, is surrounding investment-focused real estate. Yes, we provide every other service, but this is what me and Jazz do. Me and Jazz love investment real estate. So seeing these prices is a dream come true. But it's also not a dream come true because we get into dangerous territory, meaning financial policy, monetary policy by the Fed and by the province may get involved again. And I saw the first news articles yesterday. Yeah. A couple of the economic heads of the big five banks are starting to stop and say, hmm, something's starting to not feel right. It smells just like February, 2017. March 2017, and then the fair housing plan That's right. came out in April. Go by. So, 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 so we're trying to avoid government intervention. Why? Because every time government intervention happens, they can they can create an environment like all they have to do is say qualification rules change for, for mortgages. But it's easy to do that, and it's easy to see the prices come down by a couple hundred thousand. But who did you do a favor to? by locking out hundreds of thousands of buyers out of the market. You didn't do anyone a favor. You actually made the dream of home ownership more difficult and unattainable for people. There is no easy answer. There is no win-win. And that's the Band-Aid effect I speak about a that lot. That is a Band-Aid, okay. so, yes. So I speak about that a lot on, 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 on the content. Actually, the video I was going to put up on Instagram was going to be that, but I went a different route uh, today. However... And you, you also said something very important, Simos. You said that it's a very... It's very hard for the government, the city to figure out the side of the equation that a lot of people don't speak about, which is the supply. Everyone speaks about the de the, the demand and they try to cool so, so be the demand. Before right? you go and, and actually speak, the only fact that matters, yeah. because it is a matter of supply, yeah. and all they have to do is remove the bullshit red tape surrounding the supply constraint in the GTA, but yes. I'm not even going to let you go there yet. Okay, go. Cool. The airport has been closed for a year. Mm -hmm. Universities are closed. Yep. Our foreign exchange students are not in the country. And we are having 0.8 months of inventory on the market yep. with the prices shooting up. Yep. With me driving here, I'm hearing HSBC advertising a 99 cent, 99 cent, a 99 percent, a 0.99 percent. And guys, make sure you're careful. High, high ratio mortgage. Yeah, but let's just talk about that really quickly. And we jump. You guys know Jazz and Seamos. We go all over the place. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Let us know in the comments if you're liking it. Press the like button. In terms of those those promotional rates and stuff, be very, very careful. And that, we have that, mortgage advisors yeah, taking down our the, the, I'm getting heated, guys. I'm yeah, getting you can heated. tell. My boy needs like, to take this. Is the, happening right my, now. Boy, my boy needs to take his, his blazer off. He's going to go crazy. That's just this how we do it. This is happening right now, guys. This is happening. You, so, said, you, said, you said the red tape. The, the red tape, right? So, because so, even after everything being closed, i.e. the borders, the students are not here coming in. What is our excuse? Okay. Now, if the government can't, if the government does not see and realize that it comes down to the fact that it takes builders 10 years from application for the building to be built, a condo to be built, uh, uh, subdivisions to be built. It takes 10 years. That's the We cannot tape. allow that. In Manhattan, in Manhattan, it takes two and a half to three years. So it, we in had a much more dense, dense guys, place we, than we, we, we've had. We it, maybe, maybe we need to bring them back. Maybe we'll try again to reach out to the to Minister Clark. We had Tim Hudak here, who is, who is the CEO, president of the Ontario Real Estate Association. This man was deep into politics. For for uh, for a whole life, he's more than likely heading back into politics. By all, all, awesome. Well, it, I shouldn't say uh, like it just you appears just let the cat out of the bag or something. No, I didn't let the oh. cat out of the bag. But I mean, he's acting and doing things that are suggesting yeah. maybe a return to politics. Nice. But like to have Tim back here, his insight is unbelievable. But we need to reach out to Minister Clark. Mm -hmm. The the uh, like, like we need to hear what the plan is. Yep. Doug Ford goes to try to make things easier. He gets slack from everywhere that he's working for the developers and, and he's trying to destroy this. Something has to give. Yeah, because, you know, like what's touchy for me personally, Jazz, is 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 the restrictions on um, lifting the restrictions or or making it easier in terms of the the, the Greenbelt legislation. For anybody who's new uh, to REC, you might you might not have heard in the past, but we speak about this Greenbelt legislation that came into effect 
in in 2005, so 15, 16 years ago now, and it restricts developers to build along the northern part of southern Ontario. It runs right across southern Ontario. Now, I say it's touchy because, look, we need to preserve that Obviously. land, right? We need to preserve that land. But maybe some t uh, a loosening up of it could help. This is like, you know what we always say uh, to everybody who's watching? I mean, we say we would be in a room for 30 days straight until we figured this thing out. Like, we got to figure out the supply side. We're, Stop putting Toronto, these band-aids on the Toronto demand. Toronto still allows yeah. the whole NIMBY, the not in my backyard yeah. bullshit. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a proponent of real estate. Yeah. I'm not talking about breaking down the green belt. Yeah. I'm talking about infill sites in Toronto. Yeah. You cannot allow neighbors to slow down development three and four years because buddy doesn't want to have a, a high density unit. You live in Toronto, bro. Yeah, I know. And look, you, you were, have to let the city evolve. They were gonna. They were gonna. They were gonna. Uh, they were talking about laneway housing, and then so and let's then get they, it. They, they they started talking about it, and then the restrictions around it. Basement apartments, like the fact that nobody can figure out how to make it easier to allow for more basement apartments. You're going to, uh, you 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 you're you're making sure that there's more available homes, affordable. Like, why aren't they staying in a room and speaking about this? I would love, we would love to hear your thoughts on it. Throw them in the comments, guys. That's how we get a conversation. Maybe going. we do a mother sucking petition. Really? You like, that uh, far uh, yeah, yeah, I am going to go that far. Right, so. Because maybe we so, should. Because yeah. if I see in two weeks that monetary policy is enforced to yeah. slow this shit down, yeah. as opposed to even asking to address the real issue, I'll yeah. lose my lid. Well, maybe REC insiders yeah. put that poll up. Sure. Should we do a goddamn petition? Yeah. Well, just so you I know, say I, think, that I, I apologize. Think, I think, I think, I think j j j j just, it's, it's we're in Lent, like yeah. it's Easter coming up. Yeah. I say, God damn. yeah, my boy's getting heated and it's all good. It's, it's brunch with REC. Um, if you're new, please press that share button. Let's get more people involved in the conversation. We are bringing some sharks to the table today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be get these Jacob. People. Are we doing Jacob first or Marlene first? Just at, so at, I at this point, we I, I screwed up, I yeah. went off. Yeah. Uh, do you want to let's get them both in Let, and have a great convo? Let's have all, both of them in there. That's not a problem. Uh, Steven, you do that while Steven brings up uh, the handsome looking Jacob and the beautiful Marlene. Are you seeing that? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm How are sorry, you? I always lose my shit. <laughs> And, and I just want to apologize to the REC insiders for always losing my shed on brunch. So, love you guys. Hi, Marlene. Hi, Jacob. Hi, guys. So, Jacob, first, are you there, my guys. man? Jazzy. You, you went to <laughs> work. Marlene, Marlene, what about yourself? Just so I know, even though you might not have a coffee on you, what would you do? Would it be? I don't drink coffee. <laughs> ah, there you go. All right. Switzerland Mar over there. Um, uh, Marlene. Marlene, not sure how much you caught of our conversation at the beginning. We were just saying, I mean, you've you, you you're one of the 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 team members that've been here since day one. You've been working with sellers since since you got your license, and we definitely want to dive into that conversation today. And to you, Jacob, welcome to brunch with REC. Uh, Marlene, just so you know, I did compare you to the New York City Orchestra today. <laughs> Wow. It's like what it's like watching watching perfection. You're amazing. I love you guys. It's right. uh, it's incredible to think that I've actually been plugging through this industry, pushing on three decades. Wow! And wow. I look at it. Congratulations! And back, thank you. And I look back and I'm like, holy geez, the crap that I've seen. You know, for me, the you know, going back to like 1990, when there was a true recession. And I witnessed it and I was a homeowner and I saw it and I, and we survived it. You know, I look back and it's like, sure, it took a good six, seven years to recover, but at the end of the day, we all survive and we all come so, back. Now, have you seen a seller's market like this? And then we let, we can specifically talk about yeah. Durham. We can go right across the GTA. Have you seen something like this before? Never. Yeah. This is unprecedented. And it's like, you know, when I look at the big picture, when you look at the interest rates, when you look at the values, and when you look at everything, <clears throat> excuse me, on a whole, it's incredible. It's like you you could never forecast this. You could never predict this. And it Nobody just kind of, yeah, it comes out of nowhere. And it, realistically, you know, 
you get the question on a daily basis, you know, should I buy? Should I do this? Should, what, what do I do? Everybody's confused. That's what it comes down to. You know, there's a lot of, uh, of unanswered questions in this market. Sure, the rates are at an all-time low. I've never seen these rates. Come on, like when I started in the early 90s, they were like 12%. Look, I, you know, Marlene, I mean, I, I, I tell the story in 2006, I bought my first home four and a half percent on a five year fix. My brother and I, because we bought homes together, yeah. uh, like in the same neighborhood, we were chuckling to ourselves like we robbed the bank at four and a half percent. <laughs> I know. You know like, and, what? Yeah. <laughs> and like, I know what's going to happen. Rates are what? Like five year fix you can get for one point seven right now or something. I'm probably one point. Bobby just wrote a mortgage at one point four. One point four nine. You know what's going to happen. Every situation is different, though. Every buyer is unique. Every situation is unique. At the end of the day, you know, there's still the qualifying in place. You still have to qualify on a higher rate. Let's not forget that. So it's not like, you know, the biggest question is, well, you know, in five years, what am I going to do if the rates are like six percent? And it's like, you know, you, you can't look at it that way because realistically, economically speaking, we're still qualified on a proper rate. I want to make sure that we talk about the process of um, like how you're going, like how you're listing properties right now yeah. and pricing. I just wanted to give a quick, quick shout out to um, Suk Young Kim, Cheryl, uh, bear with me here, guys, yeah. uh, as well as Julie and Rick Stewart who have all just followed REC Canada. Thank you. It really makes um, our, our, our kids happy every time you guys press that follow button. And now you'll be, now you'll be, now you'll be kept up to date with all the new uh, 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 images and content and exclusive yeah. opportunities. Really appreciate it, everyone. Welcome, guys. Mar, yeah. Mar, if I'm a seller right now thinking about listing my house, how, like, talk, talk about the process. How are you, like, how are you uh, uh, figuring out the pricing and the marketing and how you're going to deal with the multiple offers? I know there's going to be a lot to unpack there, but yep. I know that I'm dealing with a shark right now. Go. Wow. Where's my fin? Hold on. <laughs> you look good, Mar. You look, hey, you look like you're in your habitat right there. Right there. <laughs> Guys, you make me feel old. Stop. <laughs> a shark. You know, realistically, like all kidding aside, the way I handle this market right now, and I've sold quite a few listings in the last couple of months. And the honest conversation I have with sellers is I don't know what to expect. And if I told you I, I would, I would be lying. So, you know, somebody that comes in and, you know, we sit down and we have a chat and we look at recent sales. Unfortunately, right now, that's out the window because that's not how we do our comparable shopping. Now, we don't look at, you know, the last door house two doors down that sold. You know, we have to look at the big picture on a whole and we have to decide. And every single I'm to 99 percent of the time in the prime areas, we're listing, you know, with an offer date. So what that means is we're posting the, the listing, let's say, on a Thursday offer date, you know, within a four to five day period, come Monday, Tuesday, that's when, you know, the seller will be looking at offers, generates the most amount of offers and obviously the best and highest price. And not only the best and highest a, price, what we're looking for is qualified buyers. We're looking for people that actually can qualify and close on a sale because there's had a lot of yeah, go ahead. What do you base qualified buyers on? So what we require when we're listing as a seller's agent is, A, we want a buyer that shows that they're pre-qualified. Now, that doesn't mean that they're 100% ready to go, but there, there still is, you know, conditions to be put in place. But at the end of the day, it has to be somebody that has a document showing, yeah, they've been to their broker. Yes, they've been, uh, you know, to TD or RB, so wherever they want to get their financing, show me something that you've got the ball rolling. And cool. it's, you know, in writing, and that helps us feel a little more confident that these are pre-qualified buyers. It tells us, you know, whether they're conventional, whether they're doing 20% down, whatever we need to know to feel secure to accept an offer. I, I, I appreciate that. And that's great insight, yeah. Marlene. Yes. I did see Tina uh, from our audience uh, ask a question. Tina Lomongo. <laughs> Tina Lomongo. Oh, hi, Tina. And uh, it, it, and, and Tina asked uh, probably uh, the most asked question uh, in 2021. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, th the most asked question that I'm asked every day, uh, which is so simple. Yeah. Should I sell? Is this the right time to sell? And I would love to hear your insight, Mar, and sure. I'll share my insight right after. For sure. Everybody's an individual. Everybody has a story. Everybody has a reason. So at the end of the day, I have to, like, it's not just a cut and dry answer. You can't say yes, sell, or no, don't sell. You have to review the reasons. You have to decide, okay, well, if you're selling, where are you going? So what's that's the, the biggest long, yeah, that's it. Like, what's the long-term plan? I won't sit there and, you know, say, oh, yeah, let's sell your house. I need to know what your plan is. Where and then go from there. Where are you going? What's the reason? Sure, you know, you're, you feel like the market is at the top end. But realistically speaking, what are you going to do next? Like, I have people that, for example, live in Durham. They want to sell and they want to move to London, Ontario, just because it's cheaper, just because they can pocket a little money. That's a prime example of a reason to sell. And at that point, maybe they want to retire. Maybe they want to give their kids some money to buy property. They're, everybody has a story and a reason. So in answer to that question, Tina, we'd have to review and, and figure it out from there. Now, you know, and I get the question a lot as well in terms of how do you win in a market like this, right? Yeah. I think uh, 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 there's a couple of different ways. A, and our boy Jacob's going to speak about that, is just having that long-term mindset of buying and holding. But also, to maybe even Tina's question, if you're thinking about downsizing, I actually think this is the best time to, 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 to do that because you're going to sell at the higher the higher end of the market. And if you're looking for a smaller home, especially if you're looking at a condo and we didn't even get into the conversation today, yeah. Seamus, about how much the downtown Toronto condo market is rebounding. And maybe we'll, we'll do a, 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 a video on the side about that. But if you're thinking about selling your home in Durham and moving into a smaller condo, you'll definitely net the highest that you possibly would compared to any other time uh, uh, in the last few years right now. So um, why don't we also just touch on uh, uh, Jacobs for a second, Jacob, what are you seeing out there, man? You're, you know, you're, uh, uh, you're, you're boots to the ground for REC, man. Like, and you're dealing with a lot of clients in terms of multiplexes and commercial. What are you seeing out there right now, brother? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, definitely just what Marlene's mentioning there in the commercial side of things. It's it's almost, let's say the invest, it's almost the perfect storm um, that we're seeing right now. It's, it's uh, you know, a lot of education programs getting everybody aware, right? Everybody, you guys are doing your job. We have more investors today than, than ever in the, in the real estate world. We have, you know, markets like Hamilton, Kitchener, Waterloo, St. Catharines, that the the appreciation is is just going through the roof and you know interest rates being low so it is really that perfect storm of these markets of cheap, of having, cheap money and, and massive cheap, population expansion you got it yeah so you know what i'm seeing out there is yeah it's 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 a you know it's you know the trenches really like it's if you're looking in that duplex triplex world right now in these markets it's definitely a hot market for it um you know, fantastic for the sellers, um, you know, and just to go, you know, piggyback on, on what Marlene was saying, um, it's extremely important to, you know, when you go to list, qualify the buyers, qualify the people that are coming in, um, you know, just as a little case study, because uh, that's the best way I think I can get across what we're seeing in these markets. So um, I listed in an eight unit multifam building in Hamilton. It okay. was you know, good building, flat roof, purpose built, you know, in a, in a nice area. Um, we listed at 1.350. Okay. I went with my buyer. I said, buyer or seller, sorry, we need to, let's get a building condition report and let's get a phase one ESA on this. Okay. And there was a bit of phase, push phase one ESA for everyone. That's an environmental study. Uh, it is the very first stage of making sure that a building does not have uh any pollutants or environmental issues, uh, and, and it is a condition on financing. So, sorry, Jacob, just uh, no, to put that out there for everyone. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. 
And I say that because that's what we're seeing, you know, a lot more people doing now is just getting these reports up front because these are going to induce a firm offer. Um, so we listed this building one one million three five zero. That was putting it at a four and a half percent cap rate, which is a fair purchase price five six months ago. Um, we we held offers on it for ten days, giving everybody to do due diligence, come through, see a few units, go back, run your numbers, and let's 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 put an offer together. We ended up getting uh, fifteen offers. On a, on a commercial building um, and the offer that won it uh, actually came in at 1.8 million firm hmm. wow up from and what, what cap rate is that one and a half <laughs> what was that cap rate yeah was, yeah, yeah so now now, you know, and the key, now the key Jacob factor was the firm and sorry Jess go ahead no, you go, buddy. Continue. The yeah. key, the, I was the just key saying, factor the key was factor that it was that firm because you, we, we see it in Hamilton, we see it in St. Catharines, um, you know, and I even hear it just, just in chatter, which you know, everyone goes, oh, any investment property sells right now, and it's, you know, yes, that's the truth, but how do we sell it for the most and the quickest? And and, and I, you know, I'm a strong believer of let's get those reports up front. At the very most, you're looking at maybe, you know, five thousand dollars for both reports, six thousand dollars for both reports. And if it gets you a firm offer, uh, that's worth every penny. Now, can you, and I'm not sure if you can speak to it, Jacob, but the psychology of the purchaser, the, 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 the investor who actually bought it, what's his plans or her plans with this? Is it long-term hold? Like, what are they planning to do with yeah. this? Because I think yeah. that's important because somebody who's watching right now and say, well, hang on, it was, you know, at uh, uh, one point, uh, a thir uh, one point uh, four almost, and it sold for one point eight. Like, what the heck? Why would this person buy mm -hmm. it? Do you know a little bit about maybe the purchaser? Can 100%. you speak about that? Yeah, I can't. I can't go too, you know, too much in the depth because I, I, I wasn't representing the purchaser on this transaction. But I can definitely just from vetting them and understanding, speaking with their with their mortgage broker and everything. Um, I, I have an understanding, and and. Um, you know, I, I feel it's a, what a lot of buyers are doing in Hamilton right now and these and these up and coming markets. It is a long term hold. They're going to come in. They're going to buy all cash or 50 percent down. So those numbers do work. Um, in this case, I believe the purchaser was coming in with about a million dollars cash. OK, this building was is going to be a legacy building for them. It's going to go to their children and their children's children. And they're generation. Buying. They're going to be. They're going to be creating ge generational wealth. Go on. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so they big, came big. in a million bucks down on a million eight. At that, the building's going to cash flow even if it was a two percent cap rate. Uh, you know, and especially in a market like Hamilton, where we're seeing a ton of new construction. Um, you know, you just look at a few of the key factors. You know, Pier uh, Five, Six, and Seven. Huge. So, so, so Jacob. So, so, Jacob, I'm going to stop you for a second because I yeah. think it's very important to what Jazz was saying. So, just just like we represent sellers and we create an environment where we can get them four hundred thousand over ask, and it's it's a it's a completely joke of a cap rate. So, it's a, so to the buyer though, because because we also represent buyers and we represent them every day. Mm -hmm. So, if I had a buyer, let's talk a little bit about would I guide him to buy it at one point eight. Mm. Would I be hurting my buyer or helping my buyer? And this goes back to what Marlene was saying. Everybody has different goals. Yeah. So if we, as a buyer, so if I have two buyers, we have Steve and we have Clem. Clem is buyer number one who is looking for a five-year play, who is looking to do X, Y, Z and come out with A, B, C. The other one is looking for a, a piece of land for his kids' kids, and it's a, it's a different play. These two buyers are going to have completely different buying strategies. One of them can compete. The other one cannot. So if, and I'm doing this right now, actually with Jacob on a medical building that's listed for almost $11 million in, in, in Vaughn. And we have a buyer who's come to the table who is looking and seeking generational wealth and is overlooking specific items because he knows time is going to take care of those items. Going back to the Hamilton property, you have that layer, but you also, only because I know the listing that Jacob sold, there was also value add opportunity. The building was in good condition, but like, let's say they're getting, for example, a thousand bucks a door rent. If they were to, as, as the units turn over, mm -hmm. you do a couple of cosmetic things, you do some changes, 
you you manage the building better, you're going to go to 1300. Well, once you paid 1.8 for it, that price is fixed forever. Yep. It doesn't change. Yep. But the rents do change. Yep. And the mortgage goes down. And the mortgage goes down. So when the rent changes, exactly. that cap rate starts creeping back up. And sorry, when you said that the 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 price is fixed, the price is fixed for that investor. That's right. The value, just for anybody who might be new into the well, investing world, that's going to continue to go up. But... And as demand continues, yep. the, what people are willing to pay as the cap rate lowers as acceptable and your rent roll keeps going up, that's called cap compression. And that's something we can do on a special a different time. Yep. But this is, so when we say, was that person crazy or was he dumb or was he, who would ever pay this much? The answer is just, you wouldn't. Yep. It doesn't mean somebody yeah. else doesn't have a plan for the piece of land. Yes. And, and it, that it doesn't make sense. So everybody's different. It's exactly what Marlene said. It's when Tina asks, should I sell? The question is, what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. And, 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 a hundred percent. And I definitely want to go back uh, uh, to both Marlene and Jacob and just kind of have an open conversation about where there might be some possible opportunities because majority of the people, if not 90 percent of uh, if not all a uh, hundred percent, sorry, of the people that are watching Brunch with REC today are investors or want to be investors. But before I go there, big shout out to Jim and Zuri and Dimitri. You're one of your paisans who just followed uh, REC Canada. We really, really, truly appreciate Appreciate all the support that you guys are giving. This happens every other Saturday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern. We made it very easy. It's live on Facebook. It's Brunch with REC, where real estate conversations happen. Mar, Jacob, doesn't matter. Go back and forth. Where can some investors see some opportunities um, in terms of possibly getting properties that are cash flowing with 20, you know, I'm looking at a property myself. I know I'm going to probably put in 25% down. The reason being because I want to be able to refinance a little bit quicker and see, see some cash flow as well. So I'm going down with 25%. I'm okay with that. Um, but where is there some opportunities? Yeah. And, and, and jazz, just going back to the beginning of the, uh, of the brunch here, you, you, you said a statement where you said, you know, drive till you qualify. Um, and I wrote that down because I, I, I thought was really interesting. And I'm just going to go back to that and say, you know, with a lot of uh, the buyers we're working with right now, it, it's not that we're driving to qualify, but we're driving to, to find cash flow. Um, so, you know, we're getting out of these extremely hot markets and, you know, we're going a little bit further instead of being, you know, instead of having your radius as 30 minutes from your house, Make that 45 minutes, make that an hour from your house. It's still within reasonable driving and we're finding much better uh, markets. And well, just, and, 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 and to that point, Jacob, and to everybody who's watching, we get the question as well, where should I invest? I have no idea, wherever the returns are best. Exactly. That, that's another one for maybe you to write down, Jacob. That was one of my better ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all joking, all, all joking aside, uh, Mar, what's happening yeah. on the east end there, Durham? Like, you know, it's one of my favorite places to look at because I know in like a Me certain too. pocket, certain <laughs> pockets, i.e. Uh, like uh, uh, Oshawa, for example, I can yeah. get a home where I can rent out the upstairs and the downstairs, call it a duplex, call it, you know, uh, whatever you want there. And, and, and we can either legalize the basement or we can find one that's legal uh, yeah. already. What am I looking at in terms of price point? Am I, can I still find something at, with a six in front of it or no? Hard, very tough okay. right now. I mean, Got it. yeah, of, of course, if it requires some work, absolutely. Yeah. If you're handy, fantastic. Um, realistically speaking, they're above seven now. Even like, you know, not even single detached. So in you think about it, Oshawa, you know, at one, at one point in time was probably the most affordable, one of the top 10 places to invest. And now it's like crazy. It's going nuts. And there are multiple offers on everything. And townhouses, semis, detached, doesn't matter. Because anything, let's, let's just to put it into perspective, anything under 900 is hot. And you're going to get, you know, those people that are qualified for those numbers uh, just going crazy and offering on these properties, just like throwing darts, a shot in the dark. They're, they're going to try. Um, I mean, uh, Oshawa saw like a, a 16, 17% uh, Durham region. Sorry, yes, I shouldn't just say Durham Oshawa. Durham region Six, in general. 16, 17% increase compared to last year, right? 
Oh yeah, it just went nuts. So from let's say from like July, August on, it just got busier and busier. And um, you know, it's not that there still weren't a lot of questions like what you know what the hell's going on. We don't know. We're we're working through it just like everybody else. And we'd lie if we told you we did, because we you know uh, you list a property and then two weeks later another similar property sells for a hundred thousand more. And it's like, what, you know, wow, like you, you just, your head spins and it's like, people are like, well, okay, well, my house is worth that now, even more so I'd love to sell it, but where the hell am I going? And if you're staying in the same area, it's all balanced. It's all relative. But if you're moving out of the area, if you're an investor overall, you got to go East, you got to go East of even, you know, like Oshawa, got to go to like Clarington. If you're qualified for something 700 under, it's got to be east of Oshawa because well, right now Oshawa is fairly hot too. This is going to be fun because it's going to be the battle of the East Coast and the West Coast because I yeah. know, <laughs> I know, and I'm not trying to take it to 90s hip hop or anything for everybody yeah. who's watching, but I know <laughs> Jacob is a massive, massive West Coast West guy, West Ender. So West what's happening Ender on the West boys. side there? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Mark. Jacob, what's going on in the West Side, buddy? What can investors, like, yeah. what, what are they looking at, man? Go. Well, yeah. they're definitely yeah. not looking at Oakville. <laughs> yeah, right? That's true. Do you have two million bucks for a garage? Here. Know, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's insanity. But what do you, you see? Do, that you actually, I, I saw an article actually in Etobicoke where there was a garage going for almost yeah. a million bucks. It was like seven ninety nine, eight ninety nine. Well, yeah. and, well, look, I mean. I, Obviously, I help a lot of our insiders with the new build investing. And in downtown Toronto, when I tell when I tell some of our new build investors that the parking spot, the parking spot yeah. is a hundred thousand dollars, they lose their lid. Simos yeah. lost his lid a it while hurts. ago, but like they <laughs> lose their lid about a a hundred thousand dollars. But here's the thing: sixteen years ago, Marmar, when we were yeah. doing this uh, uh, in downtown Toronto, the parking spot yeah. was thirty thousand dollars. Absolutely. At, and, and and to put that into context, if you look at Manhattan at that 16 year period, it yeah. was seventy five to ninety five thousand dollars for a parking spot. Sixteen and we years used to ago, laugh. it's at four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. But we Manhattan. used to laugh. we used to make that example, saying that <laughs> stop, stop thinking that thirty thousand is a lot. Manhattan's ninety five thousand. So last year, yeah. two thousand. Last year, ah, uh, sorry. Two years ago, May 2019, myself, Simos, Laura, and Clem go to uh, Manhattan. We go to yeah. the uh, a penthouse floor of like an 80 floor, 80 floor building. They show us the locker. Guys, a locker, not the, and sorry, it was more this was a Hudson, for Yards, your wine. Hudson Yards. Hudson Yards. Okay. <laughs> just for your wine, $250,000. Yep. So, like, I, I want people That's to New understand. York. It's but, New but York. Mind you, it was the coolest fucking winery we've ever seen in your life. <laughs> but I mean, there's the first F bomb of the day. I was, I was waiting for the first F bomb Hello, of the day. Hello. There it is. It's brunch That's with our every other Saturday. Guys, I'm seeing so many notifications about the amount of people that are sharing this with their friends, colleagues, yeah. and neighbors. We truly appreciate it. Jacob, you still got to answer it, though, because, you know, yeah. between myself, yeah. Marlene, and, and Simos, we love the sound of our own voice. So, Jacob, <laughs> Yes, this you, is go. True. <laughs> you go and talk to us talk to us my man about yeah. um uh, what's happening in the west end yeah so very similar to what's happening in the east it's it's just coming out it's the pebble in the pond effect from toronto right everything's coming out the ripples um what we're doing what what, what i'm doing with a lot of my investors is we're trying to go you know, into these smaller, smaller, and when I say smaller, I mean that very lightly, um, but like, you know, Brantford, for example. Uh, Brantford's a fantastic market. There's a lot of economic driving force there, yeah. um, you know, and there's still, it's, it's, it's getting hotter and hotter, but there's still deals to be had. I was just out there, you know, um, on Thursday, I spent the whole day with a couple of different clients going, uh, going around to some properties. Um, we're also looking at pockets like, you know, Paris, Ontario, Fergus, Ontario, yeah. um, these smaller towns that are growing rapidly. It's just where you need to go to start doing that. Um, but the, the top of that I want to say, you know, we're just trying to get creative with investing, you know, what do you mean? Let's, so, I love that. you know, there's a lot of like, Ontario's pushing intensification. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah. So what we're doing now is instead of just going to look for your standard duplex or triplex, we're trying to find, a duplex or triplex with an, with an option to do a garden suite or a laneway home. 
And I know Toronto's had some, you know, some hard time with that. Um, but just for example, you know, um, Brantford, uh, I spoke with the, the building department at their city just this week. And, you know, they're, they have a full checklist of this is what we need. And, and sorry, Jacob, I just wanted to say rest in peace, yeah. Walter Gretzky. I mean, I mean, he just passed away. Yeah. You said yeah. Brantford, rest in peace to Walter Gretzky. Yeah. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then that's the thing, right? So we were just trying to get creative here. It's, okay. So let's turn this two car garage into a third unit. Um, yeah. Because that's in Brantford, you can do that now. In Barrie, you can do that. Uh, Aurelia, you know, it's there's these cities are starting to implement these because we need to intensify. Um, so that's really how we're getting creative. We're starting to do things like that or, you know, do the duplex conversion yourself. Um, I actually, I'm just working on it right now. I should have it done for, for Monday, but we're just kind of doing a, a two pager on the steps to find the perfect duplex conversion property. That's awesome. Well, we share that with our and it's, what's a garden, what's a garden suite? So oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've, uh, that's new. That's new for me. So go. So a garden suite or, uh, uh, accessory dwelling would be yeah. a second detached dwelling on one property. On the so lot. normally okay. it's done with a garage. Yeah. It's, it's legit. Like if you have a detached garage, yeah, like straight up, you can turn them into a home. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. that I know, like the, like a like a laneway housing. The, this it's branding of the word garden mm -hmm. suite. Well, got just me because it's in the garden. <laughs> it's just in the garden. I love it. And I love it. I, the only really difference, it. Jazz, is is the laneway house is actually going to be on a lane. Where yeah, the garden suite would be in the backyard of some of the well, house. You, this is why you come to brunch with REC, everybody who's watching. You learn new words and terms. <laughs> and this way, when you are at a cocktail party, as we hopefully open up very soon, you yeah. know all the buzzwords it, it, in real it, estate. And let me put in then a plug because we work so hard. So yes. this yeah. this goes out to to. Every speak for RE's yourself, man. I don't know how hard I work. That's right. You don't <laughs> work hard. You don't work hard. I know. Hard. I, I do Thankfully, everybody around you works up. hard, so you can have the dog. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, uh, I have a question just joking. Jacob, There's not many people who work guys? harder. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. No, no, I, I have to. I have to make my point. Mark, okay, go ahead. no. <laughs> it, this is to your benefit. <laughs> to your benefit. <laughs> it's to your benefit. So, we literally have so much depth on the bench at this point. Uh, Jacob, who is running the commercial division behind him, has Ethan, has Mark Gano, has Mark. Like these are all investors to themselves. So these are not practitioners that, that do it for others. They do on for themselves what they teach and execute for others. So so when, when Jacob says he's going to the planning department of Brantford, he knows the planner that works there, and he knows the best planners privately for you to hire to make that garden or lane, laneway home addition a reality. Why does that matter? Because if you're going to buy a home for 600000 that you're going to rent out for 4000 for example, by spending 150000 in the back and adding another 2000 the margin on that profit is four times, 4x. So, so there's a lot of ways to make money. When you call Marlene and get her advice on listing a home, you're going to make 20, 50, 70,000 more than you would otherwise because of the depth and experience. So if like I, I never talk about like us, like service, this, that and the other. But I do ask our REC insiders legit. If you have questions, if you are thinking of making these moves. I know our guys are busy, but they're busy taking questions and servicing people like you. So don't think for a second that you're bothering anyone. Don't think for a second who to use. We are here for that reason. Well, so, look, so that's that's something I wanted to say because like it's too timely right now. Yeah, look, I mean, when you stop bothering us, that's when we might have problems with go. our lights. So keep bothering us. <laughs> Marmar, go ahead, hon. The mic's oh, no, all yours. Uh, Jacob. Just in reference, you were talking about Brantford and, you know, yes. how does that compare to like the east end of Durham, like Oshawa, Clarington, for example? What are the price points like? So we're looking at and, and I can I'm, I'm in the investment world. So yeah. for single family, um, we, I can definitely refer to the to the market stats and get back to you on that. But yes. um, multifamily wise, we are looking at, you know, duplexes in the, uh, you know, 600 range six to high sixes that's, depending. that's really um, good right now yeah 
Yeah. So we're seeing, and, and, and now everybody's going to flock to Brantford after listening to this. You just created your own problem. <laughs> but it, it, it's also that much, a little further than Durham would be from TO, correct? It's probably like an hour and a half, an hour 45. So you're, you're about an hour, I would say an hour 15, hour 20 from, from Toronto to get to right. Brantford. Yeah. So when I, when I'm dealing with investors, typically, you know, when we're talking about what they're looking for and where they want to invest, et cetera, it always comes down to, well, I don't want to drive any more than an hour and a half, or I don't want to go yeah. outside of the city any more than, you know, two hours. So it's, it, it's within a reasonable distance is my yeah. point. Like, you yeah, know, and, 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 and the other thing is just getting there, right? Like it's, it's, yeah. it's honestly hop on the, hop on the QE or hop yeah. on the 401 and, and you're there. Like Perfect. it's, it's, there's one exit, you're off, you're there. It's not a challenge to get to. You're not battling traffic on the 400 or you're not, you know, um, to go see your, your property. So, gotcha. um, you know, there's, if someone does want to come out this, to this end, yeah, there is pockets out, you know, out, out in the West end here. Um, that makes sense still, you know, we can get a little creative yeah. um, and it's just, you know, what, 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 what are the other reasons? So I always ask my investors, I say, well, you know, where do your kids go to school or where, you know, where do your you know parents live? And, and I try to you know tie that in, right? If someone says, Oh, well, my family's in London, I'll go perfect. Let's get something in Brantford on the way to London. And try to work with it that way. So. And I just want to say very quickly, guys, just just clarify going back to the 401 and the 401 aspect, like, you know, in this market, first and foremost is, you know, not everybody's, not everybody's paying cash. Like not everybody's like, you know, got $500,000 to put down. So on average, whether they're, you know, five, 10, 20% down, you have to make sure that the property appraises for its value. That's right. Because come closing time, it has to be able to close because realistically you can get so much money off a sale, but it has to come to fruition. Well, Just well, into that, that, Marlene, there was yeah. another question in the comments saying, sure. how the hell is any new buyer supposed to get into a market this heated Great and question. compete against big deposits, et cetera? Yes. Um, th th take a quick crack at answering that question, please, Mar. Uh, and, and then I do want to go to co closing comments because okay. uh, we're just getting past 1130. So realistically speaking, it's really, it's a huge concern. The first time buyers having a very hard time, not only qualifying, but just competing with other stronger buyers. And you know what? My honest answer is it may not be your time. You know, it may not be the right time for you right now. Maybe you should wait six months to a year or, you know, maybe find other outlets to, to be able to compete. Maybe, you know, if you really want to buy in this market, you know, maybe help with the down payment, maybe have a co-signer. There's so many different variables, but again, it comes down to everybody has their own individual story and we'd have to review it one on one. And 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 there's a thing called house hacking for everyone, right? Correct. Especially if you're a first time. Go, Jacob. Go take it. Jacob, it. it. I've, I've, Jacob, I've been it. dropping bombs all day. I'm good. My ego's good today, so this is on you. Bro. Um, is really go, Jacob. Go. You said it. I was gonna go house hacking. That's just one more, one more thing. What is know? house hacking, bro? Go. What is house yeah. hacking? Go. Uh, go, go yes, young guy. Tell tell us how your generation is buying homes. That's it. No, and that's I'm really passionate about this one. I I I actually I'm house hacking. I'm, I'm I'm I'll be closing on actually a personal home on the 18th, so next week Thursday, um, which again is going to be a house hack for me. Um, I, I I totally believe in it. And and house hacking is um, purchasing a a a multi unit home or a single family home, converting it into a multi unit home, and renting one of those units um, to offset your mortgage payments. Now that also helps you qualify. If you can show there's income, it's actually easier to qualify. It'll offset some of those uh, qualifications for you. Can I just so, interject? It's not a new thing. Yeah. It's something that's yes. been around for a very long yeah, time. Yeah. And that's a new phrase for it. Let me just clarify. <laughs> it's, it, it's like the garden suite. It's just like the garden <laughs> suite. It's house hacking. hacking. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. in the that's real estate it. dictionary now. Look, uh, I, I, great I, option. I, and, and, and look, I mean, a, a, a mutual friend of all of ours, uh, Scott McGilvery, and, and I know a lot of uh, people that are watching right now, I think, you know, he did a fantastic job with the show because he made it mainstream on HETV yeah. income with income property. And what he did is, is he actually lived, he, he lived it, right? Yeah. He lived in the basement. 
with him and his wife. And I think he stretched it longer than he than he originally told her that it was going to be. But he lived he lived in the basement and rented out the upstairs. And here's the here's the coolest thing with that. As a first time home buyer, you now can do that with five percent down. That's right. You don't need to put down 20 percent. Once you once you live in the basement and you rent out the upstairs. That rental income from upstairs will at least cover your mortgage. It's not going to cover your property tax and your and your home insurance and all the utilities, but you're also living in the basement. And so, look, I I, I understand how tough it is to find homes for younger people, but I guess I guess it's a great place to a, a great time to kind of finish where we started today when we said you have to drive till you qualify because yeah. if you're living if you were living in Madrid if you were living in 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 Portugal and if you were living in in Manhattan or Hong Kong or in the great straight uh, great state of Punjab I can tell you I can tell you that what happens is in these metropolitan areas you can't live in the downtown core. No. That's not where you can find that home. So if anybody who's younger, because I know there's people who are watching brunch either live or the recording right now. Look, you got to stomach a little less home. Yeah. Sorry. You yeah. got to stomach a less home. Is this, what you, tell you, is this what you tell your brothers in the great state of Punjab? I do. Too, I do. Right? You know, people well, have this, this idea of what they want, but ultimately just get your foot in the door. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Build equity um, and in three I'm, I'm going to pull a quick page out of yeah. uh, our client and friend, uh, Nick Nanji. Uh, he is <laughs> a, a leader and in, in, in a massive real estate developer of the Ismaili community. And we were having a conversation yesterday, literally yesterday. Uh, we're working on some deals. And he says, Simeon, I want you to remember one thing. Owning real estate, the ability to buy real estate is a privilege. Yeah. not a birthright. So so everyone has to just take a second to remember it. As Canadians, we have one of the highest home ownership uh, rates in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we love home ownership. We love our homes. We love the power and the, the, the security and the safety net that it creates. But I want you to remember that there's not many countries on this planet that have this kind of a, uh, of a rate of homeowners. And to many, I'm talking about Billions of people on this planet, not only will never happen, they never even thought it was a possibility. That's right. So so remember the privilege that home ownership is. Don't complain. Find a way. Yeah. Build your team. Find a way, whether it's it's an income property or your house hacking, because it's the same thing repackaged. <laughs> But let's just say let's just say that Jacob and his friends invented house hacking. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can take credit Go for Jacob. it. Except that we've had an income property for 20 years, but it's all good. Uh, but, but bottom line is it's a privilege. Um, there is strategy behind it. There are pros here to support you. Enjoy your journey. Uh, I don't have many closing uh, statements today. I think we dropped a lot of uh, insight today. Uh, God bless the entire REC nation as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Jazzy, what do you got, buddy? Look, I just want to take our uh, take the time to thank both Marlene and Jacob. Uh, thank you so much for bringing so much knowledge and experience. You know, like it's one thing to, to have read something in a book or listen to a podcast, but it's a totally different thing when you bring collectively, you know, over, you know, close to 50 years of experience in this business. And so, and in this industry and dealing with our clients and, and, and negotiating thousands of deals now. And so thank you for that, guys. Really appreciate you joining us today. <laughs> Big kiss. Thank you. Okay. To all the insiders that were watching Brunch with REC today, do us a big favor before you sign off. Throw those hearts and throw those blue likes. It lets us know that we did a good job. It truly is for our team as we try to try to remember to finish off all our brunches the same way, which is thanking, thanking the 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 giants that we're able to stand on so we can see further. Mr. Stephen Rochester, Mr. Clem Alves. Thank you for manning the ones and twos to Bobby Pume. 
Tyler, Ty Ty Walburn, Laura Stewart. Thank you to everybody who's behind the scenes. Shem Sharif, a lot of you have been working with Hello, her Sherry. as well for the last 15, 16 years. To our new team member, Carolina Roro. Appreciate everything that you did today for our brunch. And to you, the insiders. It truly is a cliche when someone says that you could have been anywhere, but you decided to spend that hour and 20 minutes with us today. But that's our biggest honor of all time. hundred percent. You're looking at uh, uh, an immigrant, uh, a son of uh, an immigrant. You're looking at another boy uh, that uh, when his parents came from Greece and we just wanted to educate. Lead 1994, with education. baby. Exactly. We wanted to lead with education and you guys are, are actually taking action. So congratulations for all the insiders. I got to see a lot of the names today. Congratulations on taking action. There's a big sign above our head right now that says ready, fire, aim. And you have been taking action for a very, very long time. Send us an email, guys. Tell us you guys are crazy. Stop doing these brunches. You suck. Or tell us that you guys did a great job. That email is info at recanada.com. I'll let you sign off, Simos. I send you hearts and nothing but hearts. It's another God-blessed weekend. The sun is shining in Toronto. I hope the sun is shining anywhere you're logging in from. I send you love, blessings, everything that's beautiful on this planet. Keep it real. Be good. Spread good. Spread love.